Hi there, my name is Anne, and in this video, I'll be customizing a tote bag into some BTS merch. More than a year ago, I customized this t-shirt into BTS merch using bleach because I really, really love BTS. They're one of my favorite artists and I've always wanted merch of them and I wanted merch that was kind of subtle but still recognizable as BTS merch. So I used bleach to create my own BTS merch. So for the design of that t-shirt, I chose the flowers of the Love Yourself Her album because I really love that album and I also added some butterflies because Butterfly is one of my favorite songs of them and I put the BTS logo in the corners not in the corners, on the sleeves of the t-shirt and if you want to know the original design of that logo then you should watch my video because it was supposed to be something else so go watch that after this video obviously <laughs> So in this video I'm going to make another BTS merch item and I really love tote bags, they're super handy and very useful and one thing that I really really love about tote bags is that they're super customizable. You can paint anything you want on them, so that's what I'm gonna do today. The design on the tote bag is going to be the BTS logo which isn't really subtle but I really want something with the BTS logo on it because I don't really have such an item. And it's not going to be just the outlines, it's actually not going to be outlines, it's going to be a gradient of colors. And for the colors I'm going to use the colors of the Love Yourself Answer album. So it's going to go from light blue to light purple to light pink and then to orange, like a warm orange. And that is going to be the design of the tote bag. So without further ado, let's get started! Okay, the first thing that we're going to do for this tote bag customization is use some painter's tape to get the design that we want. And I will be using some thin painter's tape and some thick painter's tape just because I would really like it to have the inner part of the logo to be a little bit tinier, but you can also just cut the painter's tape. You definitely don't need two rolls of painter's tape, but this is what I have, so I'm using it. I have pulled up a reference photo of the BTS logo on my computer screen while I'm doing this just so that I can make sure that I get the angles right but this would probably have been smarter if I had printed off the logo beforehand and put it underneath my tote bag and not just have freehanded this because doing it this way I am having to pick up a lot of tape again and then replacing it onto the tote bag because I would have placed it wrong or if it would just look wrong. So it would have probably been smarter if I had printed off the design beforehand. So I have placed all the vertical pieces and now I have to make the angles. So I'm using again the thicker tape to make those angles and I'm placing them where I think is right. It's not going to be perfect, but that doesn't really matter. It's going to look great eventually. So I'm just placing the pieces one by one and making my design and I'm picking up the pieces that are wrong wherever it's necessary. Once I'm done with placing my pieces, I also put a lot of tape underneath the sides because I am afraid that I will paint over it because sometimes I can get a little bit too wild with my brush so I'm just putting pieces of tape there just to be safe. And once the tape is on, I can move on to the paint. Okay, real talk here. I did something very very stupid which is I was too happy to start painting that I forgot a very important part which is that you should place something between your tote bag, like a cardboard piece or something. Because if you start painting it and you have a thinner tote bag than mine, it can bleed through. Which is not exactly ideal if there is nothing beneath it. So put a piece of cardboard between your tote bag and make sure that the paint doesn't go through to the other side, because that would have been unfortunate. I'm very lucky that it didn't happen to me, but please be smarter than me and put a piece of cardboard between your tote bag. <laughs> I'm gonna be using acrylic paint for this and I'm gonna mix it in with some fabric medium. And fabric medium is crucial for this because if you would just use acrylic paint, there is a chance that 
the paint will crack once it's dry if you start to move your tote bag. So fabric medium is something that you can add to your acrylic paint which makes it more flexible once it dries. Which is awesome because that's exactly what you need when you paint on fabric. So I'm starting off with the first color which is this light blue and I'm just going to paint it a little bit at the top. I'm not gonna bring it all the way to the end of the corners, just a little bit in the corners and I'm making sure that I have an even layer of paint all throughout the blue color. I mixed enough paint so that I would be sure that I would have enough paint to blend it later with the purple color but because I have to paint the purple color first before I can start blending it obviously I will try to save the paint that I have mixed up by putting it in a little container and that way I can reuse it later on when I finally need to start blending the colors in. Next is the purple color and I get this color by just adding white to my violet because I don't know, I like the pastel kind of look, so adding white really helps with that. And I'm just again making sure that I paint the entire part of it in an even layer of paint and that the entire part of the purple color is an even coverage because that's kind of important when you're doing this because you don't really want the tote bag to see through. So you have to paint kind of an even coverage to make sure that the tote bag isn't see through. And once the purple color is done, I can finally blend the first colors together, which is really exciting to me. I don't know why, I just think it's really fun to finally start blending it together. And I'm blending the colors together by putting a little bit of blue on one side of my paintbrush and a little bit of purple on the other side of my paintbrush and then putting it down onto the tote bag and then going up and down with my paintbrush. And I just repeat this and repeat this and once I'm kind of okay with my uh, blended colors, with my gradients, that's what I mean, gradients, <laughs> I start going in circle motions and I don't know if this is the best way to get a gradient, but this is how I did it. And it worked in the end, so that's great. <laughs> and I just kept doing that until I was happy with my gradient. And then I could finally start on the next color, which is not the pink, but the orange. I originally wanted to start with the pink, but I added a little bit too much orange to my original pink. So instead of pink, I ended up with a pinkish orange, so like a warm orange. So I started with the orange instead, which doesn't really matter, it turned out fine. And again, the same as the blue, I didn't really go far with the orange, I wanted it to be just at the bottom. So it isn't really a lot of orange, but I think I like it this way. And now that the orange is done, it's finally time for the pink color, which will be the last color of this design. I am bringing the color up to the line of both colors, so of both the color of the purple and the orange, just to make sure that when I do the gradient, it has already an even layer underneath it. And I'm making sure again that the entire area of the pink is covered with pink and that there's no part of the tote bag that pokes through. And once that is done, I can finally start blending the pink with the orange and the pink with the purple, which really makes this tote bag come together quite nicely. So I'm so happy that it's finally this part. And once I'm done blending those colors together, I go over some areas that I don't think are blended enough or where I don't think that there is enough color. And I'm just making sure that every single part of this design looks great. And once the paint is a little bit dry, I can do the very satisfying part, which is taking off all the tape. Peeling off the tape to reveal your final result is always so satisfying to do, but 
I had a little bit of a problem and that is that it bled through to some parts of my tape which isn't ideal so that's something that I will have to fix. Okay, so the tote bag bleeding through is not exactly ideal because it looks fine from far away but up close you can really see that it isn't nice and it isn't quite neat. So that's not exactly ideal and there is no way to reverse it. The entire thing of the fabric medium is the fact that it stays on so you can't wash it out. So the only thing that I can do is add on to it. So I took a picture of how the tote bag looked at this exact moment and I opened it in my drawing program Krita and I painted some white lines around the logo to see how it would look and I actually really really like it. I think it makes the logo pop a little bit and I think that's what I'm gonna go with. So I'm gonna use a white Posca pen to outline the logo and hopefully hide my mistakes. Okay, outlining this thing was nerve-wracking to say the least, because as I said, you can't undo this. So it was very nerve-wracking, but one thing that is really handy and you should know is that if the Posca pen is still wet, you can undo your mistakes by taking a paintbrush and adding some water to the paintbrush and then going over the line that you messed up on. And I had to do this a lot of times. but. In the end it worked and I'm really happy with my outline so I'm just I'm glad that this worked. So I have finished painting the tote bag and I've let it dry for a couple days and the last step that I had to do to finish this tote bag I did off screen which is I had to iron the tote bag and when you iron the tote bag it is quite important to use either parchment or baking paper I don't really know what's the difference between them but you should turn your tote bag inside out and put a piece of parchment paper underneath your design so in between the two sheets of the tote bag and if your design bleeds through to the other side of the fabric then you should also put a piece of parchment paper on top of the fabric and then heat set it with an iron. Uh, I ironed it for a couple of minutes and just to mention the fabric medium that I used didn't specify that you had to heat set it. It said that it would be fine without it, but I did it anyway just to be safe. And also I used a Posca at the end and Poscas do need to be ironed if you want them to be permanent. So that's what I did. But now the tote bag is finally done and I can show you the final result. So here is my finished tote bag. I am absolutely in love with this. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I think it looks amazing. I'm really glad that I added the white lines at the end. I think it really makes the tote bag pop and that the design pops out of it a little bit more. Even if it isn't visible from afar, I think it, you do see it and I do think it makes the logo pop. And I really love how the gradient turned out because I'm still not really comfortable with acrylics. But I think it turned out fine from my level of expertise. And yes, the logo at the top is kind of crooked. I don't really care. <laughs> like, I love it with all its imperfections. It would have been smarter if I had printed out the logo onto some paper and then traced the design onto here. But honestly, I freehanded it and it still looks fine. I'm really, really happy with it. And I'm really just... I really love my tote bag, so I hope you also make one. It's really easy to do and yeah, this is how it turned out. So that was it for this video. I hope you liked watching it because I certainly liked making it. If you liked watching this video, please give it a like and please consider subscribing to me. I really would appreciate it because I'm trying to be more consistent with my uploads and I'm having a lot of fun making videos for you guys. So if you want to see more of me, please subscribe. I will leave my social media links down below in the description. So my Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Tumblr, even though I don't really use my Tumblr. I am a lot on TikTok. So if you would like to follow me elsewhere, then my links will be in the description down below. But that's all for now. Thanks so much for watching and I hope I will see you next time. Bye.